whatever. Let's just get started. Go. Hello and welcome to a commentary run of this uh, for your entertainment purposes and for your GDQ panel if you're watching this. Also, I'm putting some timestamps in the bottom if you want to click through it or if you don't want to watch it, whoever you are. So this is Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace for PlayStation 1. There's a PC version, which is actually uh, a lot different and slower, and a lot of the skips don't work in the PC version. The PlayStation 1 version is the best version of the game. Uh, so the voices are turned off because the dialogue is a lot longer when you let the voice acting play. So just jumping right into it. So here's the first room. So starting right off the bat, you go out of bounds right here. Uh, there are two places to go out of bounds in this room, but that one's the most consistent. And there's a drop right here. You have to drop and land on that little ramp. And uh, you can't jump out of bounds because you'll die because of fall damage. But by dropping out of bounds right there and just entering this hangar, you bypass a lot of the first level. A lot of fighting, a lot of button pushing. And uh, the enemies in that hangar don't spawn. There's like some ships. Also, there's a skip. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's hard to commentate this live because so much is happening, but... Yeah, that's the first level. Extremely fast. Two big skips that are really only possible on the PlayStation version. These do not work on the PC version at all. So, I'm already out of breath. <clears throat> there was also something going on. Uh, you saw me running against the walls for a little bit there. There's this thing called wall boosting. That we, or we call it wall boosting. If you run at an angle along some walls in the game, you just go really fast for no reason. Don't know why it happens. PlayStation 1 things. But um, wall boosting is in a lot of parts of the game. It's just a very minor optimization. Uh, but there's no reason not to do it. So here we are in the swamps of Nebu. This is where we see Jar Jar Binks for the first time. Um, but there are two Jar Jar skips in this level. And we will see those momentarily. You don't need to push those guys over. It actually... Blasters don't do too much damage to you, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, so, to the left there is a cutscene with Jar Jar, where he runs in circles and screams about droids. Uh, but if you go out of bounds right here, shouts to Puri Puri for finding this out of bounds and jumping in a very specific way to not fall through the world and die. Uh, you can actually bypass that Jar Jar cutscene altogether, saving like 15 seconds. There's also a seat to the left there. There's like a whole platforming section you're skipping as well. So Jar Jar is just here now. And uh, you never have to talk to him and sit through the cutscene where he screams about droids. Uh, another little wall boost here. Turn left. See Jar Jar? He's going to disappear right up here. And he's gone. So we did a couple wall boosts there. Do a nice little double jump. Double jumping in this game uh, is actually pretty difficult. Um, the timing of your double jump, as long as you time your double jump really late, you can get the most distance out of it. And also wiggling seems to give you, like wiggling as in moving left and right in midair, seems to give you a little bit more distance. So that uh, allows for a lot more skips to happen in the game because you can get to places where the game does not expect you to get to. Also, the ledge grabbing is not very consistent in the game, which we're about to see here. Here's another Jar Jar skip by jumping over here. You don't trigger the cutscene. Uh, these right here, you can make these jumps uh, with really good double jumps. You can also grab onto the ledges and flip up, but because the game is a rushed mess, uh, ledge grabs don't always work. I pause buffer here to clip out of bounds. Uh, ledge grabs don't always work, so you don't want to rely on them too much. Uh, this is just quick killing and getting Jar Jar to go to the end of the level. Uh, so yeah, that backflip you saw earlier, I did a pause buffer to make the game lag more so I could clip out of bounds a little bit more easily. So we approach Jar Jar from the opposite direction here. So we he's walking to the end of the level, but to make the end of the level trigger, you have to hit a trigger right behind Qui uh, Obi-Wan right now, which is going to spawn Qui-Gon at the end of the level and some droids. Uh, Qui-Gon and Jar Jar have to be at the end of the level uh, to end it. So there are the droids, push them over, and there's Jar Jar and Qui-Gon. If you don't go back and hit that trigger, because you skipped the trigger, because you backflipped through the wall, um, then you can't end the level. And uh, if you enter this cutscene when it's just Jar Jar here, um, nothing happens, and you soft lock the game. So I have some nice dialogue here. Talking about going to the safe city of Otogonga. 
which is actually one of the hardest, uh, as you can see in my splits, it's one of the hardest levels in the game. If you're going for a really optimal time, it's really not forgiving, which we will get into. There are cutscenes that play here, but you just mash through them. So there he is, Boss Nass. Uh, there's a whole skip, a sequence break in this level where you don't have to talk to Boss Nass at all. You really don't have to even protect uh, Jar Jar or Qui-Gon at all, or walk with them. Just run past them. So you're supposed to hit a cutscene where you go in and talk to Boss Nass, but instead we're gonna start being hostile right away. Force push the guard over, get in here. So doors go up. This is a point where you're supposed to start fighting Gungans and it's like your level's done essentially. But you can clip through the floor right there if you jump in a certain way. And I pause buffer to get some extra lag so I can clip through the floor. So by going to that tunnel right below um, Boss Nass's room, you just circumvent that whole cutscene and you don't have to worry about uh, Gungans fighting you and Qui-Gon and Jar Jar. Because if you're hostile at the very beginning of the level, it tries to just end your playthrough by, you know, fighting you, killing you, and killing your NPC allies. So now we can kill as many Gungans as we want. This is a deceptively hard jump. That's one of the jumps that I was talking about where if you have a really late double jump, you can actually make that. Um, it's just a small optimization. You could take a slower way over those pillars, but, you know. Obviously, you want to go as fast as possible. Turn around here while this elevator is going down to reduce the amount of lag you're getting. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of got the golden eye effect. Like, the more you're looking at, the more the game will lag. So you want to look at the least amount as possible, if you can ever help it. This is one of the few rooms you have to do intended, because it's an elevator that goes up. This tunnel was the elevator that went up, and they can cross it. Uh, kill this Gungan. He wants to talk to you about stuff, but if you kill him, the door just goes away. Now it's coming one of the more uh, aggravating, precise skips in the game. So there's this box puzzle where you gotta push this box around and push all the buttons, but if you jump and lag the game in just such a way, and do this jump in just such a way, you can actually clip through that force field in the floor. Otherwise, that box puzzle is like... It's like a minute long or something. You gotta push the box in every corner and push a button, and this is the pushing and pulling. It's very slow, so shoutouts to Purry Purry for finding a setup for that um, force field clip, because he made that way easier. You can force push this guy, makes this uh, elevator come up. I actually just found a skip for this. You don't have to make that elevator come up. You can actually backflip through the door in front of you and land on top of the elevator, and then go down there. But it's actually really um, volatile, and you can fall through the world and die like 90% of the time, so I don't use it in the run. It is nice for like maybe a segmented run. So if you go to the left here, I'm going to the right, but if you go to the left, you actually rescue Jar Jar, and Jar Jar unlocks the elevator over to the right there to get to the bongo. That's the end of the level. But there's this really hard goddamn clip uh, where you just jump straight in, and you talk to Qui-Gon, and you never rescue Jar Jar. It's a, it's a Jar Jar skip. It's a completely awesome Jar Jar skip. Saves a lot of goddamn time. But it is incredibly hard to do, mostly because of... It's not getting out of bounds and then jumping, it's clipping into the room with the bongo. It's actually um, really seemingly random. But it's too good not to do it. If you were to pick this game up, I would recommend going and rescuing Jar Jar for your first, you know, your first runs of the game. So here's one of the coolest uh, levels in the game, Gardens of Feed. Not only because you get to see Jar Jar fall off a bridge and say, ouch time, but there's that tank over there. And uh, normally you'd have to run through the level, like go down into the water, but the tank blows up the pot. We can jump over here. We're avoiding triggers to make this pillar not fall, but by using that pillar, we can actually just completely go to the end of the level. But there's two gates in the way. So we stand on here, let the tank shoot us, jump off, jump up off the debris, and there's the end of the level. Um, actually, when you're across that bridge, um, even if you mess up that uh, jump off the debris when the tank shoots that little uh, pillar you're on, even if you mess that up, there's still two um, levers you can force push that are right near the end of the level there. 
But yeah, Gardens of Theed, one of the coolest levels in the game. Followed up directly by one of the worst levels in the game. Uh, this is a very long escort mission, and there is tech, and there are optimizations in this level. But it is... It, it's one of the levels where if you were to learn this game, the most can go wrong. Uh, there's so many things that can immediately end your run. Um, it takes a lot of practice, but when it goes fast, it is actually really fun. Uh, believe it or not, it's just really hard to get down. Luckily, I'm very good at it, so I'm just going to toot my own horn there for a second. I don't even know why we're rescuing uh, her, because this is not the queen. This is one of her decoys, but we, you know, whatever. It's like a need-to-know basis uh, secret, I guess. <clears throat> so, this is the first level where we are going to use Infinite Saber Glitch. And then Infinite Saber Glitch works exactly, almost exactly like it does in 3D Zeldas. <clears throat> so, once we push this box and get up here, we're going to do it. So, by swinging your lightsaber and falling off a ledge, you keep your hitbox out for your lightsaber. And Obi-Wan's strongest attack is the jumping, landing, spin attack right there. So now we have infinite saber glitch. So anything you just kind of run up to, that droid just exploded because we have infinite saber glitch. Also, here's Obi-Wan with a rocket launcher, which is probably the best thing ever. So we're going to use infinite saber glitch. It makes a lot of the fighting in this level a lot, lot, a lot better. As you can see, you can just run up. I also like to call it the realistic, realistic lightsaber glitch. And um, it doesn't hurt the queen, luckily, so you can just run into her. Um, the only thing you can hurt the queen with is explosives, I believe. So if I swing my saber, I'll lose ISG. If I load a game, I'll lose ISG. And um, something else will make it go away. Uh, you shoot the tank there because there's a little droid act, uh, working out behind there. You can see his corpse for a second there. Um, but by doing that, you get the tank to move out immediately and press that button, which is a fast way to do this courtyard. And here's a little alleyway where the queen waits for you to clean stuff up. You can kill things really quickly. And here's the reason why we got the missile launcher. Send a force push down there. We actually need to kill these droids down this hallway, and the missile launcher does that the best. The reason we do that is because the, uh, the queen waits in this room right here, which would be totally fine, and we kind of glitch her AI out, and she'll run out by herself. But um, if enemies ever hit the queen, she kneels down, says help me, and she waits there for about 11 seconds. And those droids that we killed, they can actually shoot the queen through the floor, and it will make her stall there and waste a lot of time. So you just, you just shoot them with a missile launcher, so there's no risk of that. Here's a jump. You're supposed to climb a rope over there to the right. You might be able to see it. Um, but with a perfectly angled uh, jump here, you can actually ledge grab that balcony. And you gotta kill this guy because he will kill the queen. So there's a nice little uh, skip. Press the button. And there is a backup if you miss that balcony jump because ledge grabbing is really inconsistent. Even though it's a completely intended mechanic, it's very inconsistent. Um, there is a backup door clip to get into that room. Run into these mines so the queen doesn't touch them. Kill these dudes. You still have infinite saber glitch. Every time you pull out your lightsaber, it's working. Uh, here's a nice little just send a force push and skip whatever platforming it wanted you to do to find that switch. And now we wait for the queen. And there's a little trigger up here that will spawn some droids behind the queen and you have to kill them or else the queen won't move. And this is, the rest of this is just all optimal killing while trying to not get the queen hurt. You have to hit that turret with, with infinite saber glitch to get the queen to continue coming. Kill all these droids or the queen will not continue going. You see there's a trend here. There's a lot of things you have to do to make the queen keep goddamn going. Um, I just recently started using flash grenades at this part. Because some droids, you just want to kill like big pockets of droids at the same time. Flash grenades do that really well. And just run to the hangar. The queen, I already know the queen is running to the next spot I need her to be in, so I'm just cleaning up the hangar. This is the last part of this mission. And that is Escape from Theed. It is the hardest level to learn, but when done quickly, it looks like nothing's going wrong. It's, 
I think I actually golded on this in this run. Yeah, wow. That was really good. <clears throat> and the conditions for this level being completed are the queen and Qui-Gon have to be like in that little area they were at right near the ship. Um, there is a way where you can kite. You can go to Qui-Gon and if the queen's not there, he'll be like, go get the queen. What are you doing? But um, there's a point in the hangar where if you hit a trigger for it, Qui-Gon starts chasing you. You can actually run out of the hangar and Qui-Gon chases you all the way to wherever the queen is or until he talks to you. So I've actually tried that. I've tried kiting him like all the way through the level and talking to the queen. But no matter where um, the queen is, the game soft locks really or hard locks really hard if um, everyone isn't in the hangar. So unfortunately, there's no skip for that mission. If everyone finds it, that'll be that'll be great. So we are in most S, but now we are playing as Qui-Gon, which is a change of pace. Um, the beginning of this level, there are a bunch of Tusken Raiders you have to dispatch because Padme needs to get through the canyon uh, before you can go to Mos Espa. So, Qui-Gon has an infinite saber glitch. It's a little different. You get it on this rock over here, you swing, and it cancels your swings. So, you see the Tusken Raiders just fall over there. And um, the quality of your ISG is really random seemingly sometimes you get a really this is a pretty decent one uh tuscans are dying very quickly sometimes the isg just is terrible um but that was a pretty good one so i'm waiting for padman to get to that little patch of rocks right there they can leave she'll be good um so once she gets to that point she'll be able to leave the canyon perfectly fine by herself and she will teleport into mos espa same with jar jar so you can just go straight forward because they hit whatever triggers they need to hit this is one of the levels that is amazing with voice acting turned on. Um, unfortunately, you don't get to hear it in PB attempts, but in a marathon setting, you could totally turn voices on. That little, it loses a bit of time, but it, I think it's well worth it. There are some good memes to come from the voice acting of this game. So now we're just, this is where the game takes a weird kind of turn into like, questing RPG um, style instead of like action adventure. There's a lot of dialogue. Uh, you gotta hit this trigger for Jar Jar to do some stupid thing. And now we're chasing Anakin. Getting put on some FBI list. Jump over this guy because he wants to punch you in the face. Here's Shmi. She blocks you from talking to Anakin but you can give her the old Shmi push. I think the way that works is you wall boost a little bit and you get past her. So now we talk to Anakin, just do some optimal dialogue. And now you get to chase Anakin through a junkyard. Follow me. Come on. And he tells you you're awful slow for a Jedi, even though you get to this point and you have to wait for Anakin. And he zips around like a speed demon. If you go on that bridge too soon before Anakin goes over that bridge, you soft lock the level. So you gotta be careful, you gotta wait. I fell off there, because I'm terrible. And you're just chasing Anakin around, because they had to add a, they had to add a platforming section to this level, I guess, for some reason. So now you're gonna trade a Naboo fusion coil to Watto, which we got in the last level. I didn't point it out, but we grabbed it along the way. So now we're just getting more uh, pod racer parts for Anakin. That's the whole point of this level. So now we gotta go get Jar Jar to go to where Anakin and Padme are to make sure we can finish the level. It's one of the requirements. So here he is, pipping himself out to some elephant dude. The the music elephant dude. I forget his name. Max Rebo? Is that his name? I could be wrong. So Jar Jar is heading back now, and the last thing we have to do is get a coupler or something. So we're gonna murder this guy. Um, which will spawn this part here. Servo control system. Now there is a timer going down now after you murder anyone in the level where Anakin won't talk to you anymore because he won't talk to a murderer like you. But as long as you talk to Anakin before that timer like kind of hits, um, you're totally good. But if I were to wait, if I had waited like 10 seconds longer, Anakin will not talk to you and you soft lock the level and you have to restart. 
So you got to be a little bit careful there. Um, the reason you do the jump attack on that guy is because the jump attack one-shots him. If you were to just hit him with your lightsaber, like, once, um, he'll run to a guard, and it makes everything a lot more complicated, and you might hit that timer before you can talk to Anakin. So the jump attack just one-shots him, and it's fast. Most Esper Arena, this is one of the coolest levels in the game. There are too many bosses and a lot of cool skips. So here's an easy little clip with a roll set up, Ocarina of Time. And here is another little clip. This basically skips a whole kind of side quest where you got to mind trick a Twi'lek dancer girl into walking you into whatever area this is. So this is the first mini boss. We go into Jabba's pit. Those are the 50 chicken nuggets that Watto wants to for you to bet on the pod race. Um, they're 50 pegats. They're they're gold coins or something, but I like to call them chicken nuggets. So you tell Jabba, I won't do the thing. I won't entertain you. Blah blah blah. Uh, no matter how you do it, you have to fight the mini boss. So you just pick the fastest dialogue options. Um, so you take the 50 chicken nuggets. And here's the mini-boss. He comes out of this room. And the way we fight this boss is Qui-Gon's attack combo actually keeps him from coming out completely, at least to a certain point. So we can kind of block him from getting to the point where he starts his, like, boss AI. So he's just doing this walkout animation. If you do it just right, he never fights you, which is great. If you take no damage, um, which that was a good fight right there. If you take no damage, you actually save like four or five seconds later on because you need full health for a boss later. Here's a door clip that skips a side quest where you have to get two guys uh, drinks from the bar. Um, it's 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 complicated. Uh, all you need to know is that you can fall through the world in a lot of places out of bounds. So you got to jump in a very precise spot. Um, in a marathon, you would save here. Absolutely. And I messed that. I can't believe I messed that up. The hard part is getting onto this vent. This part is the easy part, I, so that was not that great. <laughs> um, it's not too bad, though. So here we give Watto the 50 chicken nuggets. And um, we're going to get into the arena now. And there is a small patch right here where you take no fall damage, for whatever reason. Um, if you land anywhere else, uh, you will die. But this is a very quick way of getting into the arena. Otherwise, you have to do another side quest to something so here's the here's the pod race here's Anakin this little lizard monkey he stole Anakin's ignition capacitor and right here is a point where you could go to the right to get full health but I took no damage during the fight so um, you could either get that full health if you took a lot of damage but right near the second mini boss there are two small health so you can also grab but um, also we grab the flash grenades which are in the film if you remember is a deleted scene. And you just chase the lizard monkey up here to the second mini boss. He is not the mini boss. So you push through here. Here's where you can take some backup health if you want. But this guy, he's a real pushover as long as you have flash grenades. Without flash grenades, he's pretty difficult. But that's why you need full health. Look at my health right now. So you pick up the part that um, was stolen from Anakin. And you go give it to him, and that's the end of level. And I lost that time, um, I lost 17 seconds, mostly because, um, the door clips. Those two door clips, I got them extremely fast in whatever 39 minute PB this was, so. It's unfortunate, but what are you gonna do? When, it, when everything else is going well at this point in the run, I cannot complain. So this is a pod race. You actually don't get to watch it. Um, they actually just do the reactions of every character, which is pretty hilariously lazy. Skywalker's right behind Zabulba. Already. Coming into the last turn already. Side by side with Zabulba. They're tangled. They're not going to make it. Oh no. Skywalker pulls free, so Bulba has crashed. Skywalker wins. This is the fastest pod race of all time. Okay, so this is the last Tatooine mission. This is just dueling with Darth Maul. 
Spoilers. So there are two th two th tricks in this um, level, essentially. Um, there is a cutscene skip where you can skip the cutscene where Darth Maul... There's a point where Darth Maul knocks down some rocks in front of Qui-Gon, and then you have to duel him and like get through the rocks. Um, you can skip that cutscene entirely and just never have the rocks fall. It's like a 10-second time save. There is also a skip where... Qui-Gon runs to the ship during the ending cutscene. Sometimes he takes like 10 extra seconds, and I'll I'll show you what I mean when we get there. So here's the cutscene skip. When you walk through this kind of arch or whatever, um, a cutscene would play where Darth Maul knocks some rocks down. But if you run along the wall like I did there, um, it skips that cutscene. So here's the Darth Maul fight. Um, it's on a timer. You don't have to fight him. You just have to wait till the hyperdrive generator gets on the ship. Um, but when the cutscene plays, you're going to see Qui-Gon running down past that health pack on the top and then run towards the ship. Um, sometimes right here. So he just ran to the ship. I call that quick gone. Quick gone, Jin. Um, sometimes when he, he's supposed to do that turn, he'll just stand there and look at Darth Maul for like 10 seconds. Anywhere from 2 to 10 seconds. It's completely random. Uh, we don't know what causes it. It is a nice time save that you just are blessed with sometimes. Uh, maybe somebody can figure it out. I don't know what it is. I've done a lot of testing, and it it seems to work more when you get the cutscene skip, and then you run straight to the back like I did. But um, even then, sometimes it doesn't work. So this is Coruscant. Um, for some reason, they added a level where you play as Captain Panaka. Um... I feel like this is a result of the marketing team thinking that people would like Captain Panaka a lot. So they, they said we need to put a Captain Panaka level in. Um, this is another escort mission, but it's not nearly as bad as the last one. And in fact, there's a nice sequence break. Well, it's, it's a little sequence break. So we triggered a thing where the queen's about to get kidnapped. Um, that's the whole point of this level. People are trying to kidnap the queen. Right after the Jedi leave, there's a kidnapping attempt. Kill these guys, talk to this droid, kill the hover cannon. If the queen is not on this elevator, or if she's shot and kneeling when this like hover elevator thing goes off, she dies instantly. So you need to make sure she's on the hover elevator when you activate it. Or else you're gonna have a bad time. She just has a heart attack and dies. And you have to restart the level. Kinda wait for a second there, so she's... You kind of have to round every corner really carefully here. Not really carefully, but carefully enough because the queen can get stuck on a door frame. And if you go far enough away from the queen, she dies instantly. And you have to restart the level. It's like a death tether escort mechanic. It's really awful. Uh, shoot this hover cannon because if you don't, it will start shooting the queen. And now we have to do a box puzzle. Um, there are a couple ways where we can almost skip this box puzzle um the only thing you would have to do to skip this box puzzle is to get up to i'll point it out when i see it straight ahead of panaka right now there's a little balcony just straight ahead you need to be able to get up to there and you are good you're totally fine if you can do that but there's just no way i, I think you can clip through that railing if you're on the boxes to the right there but um, we haven't found anything yet. So, there's a segment here where Padme gets kidnapped. Um, if you go and push a button you're supposed to push. But, if you get up here and you just hug the left wall here, you don't hit the trigger that would kill the queen. So you can just continue now. She never gets kidnapped. You, uh, you don't have to escort the queen for a while. She'll respawn later because that's the way the level kind of goes. She gets kidnapped, you rescue her later. So, you leave her and then she teleports and you rescue, you rescue her later. Um, so if voices were on here, you see it says, we have to get out of here. She'll say a bunch of stuff like, more hover cans are coming. We have to get out of here. We must hurry. She will say that for the rest of the level because she never got kidnapped. The kidnapping is what makes her stop yelling about that. They'll be coming back soon. Um, if you have voices on, it, this is one of the greatest moments in the run, especially because if you were to spam the circle button while this is happening, 
you make you force her to say those things so when voices are on you can just mash circle and she will never shut up it's hilarious and um in a marathon you could really trick people you could be like okay let's do a donation game every time she talks about hover cannons donate a dollar or something and you can like not spam it at all oh there's an out of bounds casual out of bounds right there um this is all just uh button puzzles um but you could totally <laughs> you could totally be like oh donate one dollar or hey take a drink every time she talks about hover cannons and just totally like let it go like normal but like halfway through the level just start mashing it and uh, that's a devious trick you could do to someone. Just getting keys, doing button puzzles here. And here is the queen. She teleported. And you kill her captor. So even though you rescued her, she's just going to keep talking about hover cannons. And it kind of interrupts her dialogue too, which is pretty fun. Or it doesn't interrupt it, but it like goes along with it. So there is another puzzle and then a mini boss, mini boss here. So yeah, there's, as you can see, there's just a lot going on in this game. There's a lot of skips, a lot of tech sequence breaks, all this, all this fun stuff. You kind of have to wait for this button to turn off and then keep going. You do all this intended. Uh, unfortunately, there's kind of no way to bypass this because you need to get the queen to the elevator. So even if you could find a way out of bounds to get to the elevator up here, um, also here, easiest, most pointless out of bounds, does nothing, because you have to wait here anyways. Um, but even if you could get to like this elevator and progress by yourself, it, it doesn't matter because the end of the level requires you to have the queen there. So the mini boss is right through that door. Uh, we go out of bounds here because this mini boss deflects your blaster shots, but if you're slightly above him, he can't do that. So you get some quick extra damage here before you jump in. Because once he's at the wall, you have to jump in and fight him because you can't hit him anymore. So to counteract the fact that he deflects your blaster shots at you, you kind of want to jump back and uh, keep re-angling yourself to hit him. That was a pretty good fight. And I kind of walked through that doorway in a weird way to make sure the queen didn't get stuck on any door frames. So now we're taking a very long elevator. I don't know why this elevator is here or why it's so long, but it's like a 35 second elevator ride um, where she just keeps talking about hover cannons. More hover cannons will be coming. It's a real treat. It's a real treat when she talks about hover cannons and such. Uh, doing runs with voices on is, is just a good time. And there's the end of the level right there. And that was a gold split. Uh, that's what happens when you get quick gone. The quick gone in the last level. Um, and just a good boss fight, I guess. Good boss fight in this level. So here's some political talking with Senator Palpatine. And every once in a while, uh, Padme will interrupt and talk about hover cannons. So it's even better when voices are on. But this is... This is kind of the last moment where you can rest and kind of catch up on your nerves if you're having a good run. Because the next two levels are... Uh, the next level is really fast and it's not that heavy pressure. The last level is butt cheek clenching. Uh, a, lot, a lot of tricks in that level to worry about. Okay. So that's enough of Captain Panaka. Um, Assault on Theed is a multi-segment level where you play as Obi-Wan and Padme. Um, you start off as Obi-Wan, you go into the hangar, and it plays a cutscene where you face off with, or you meet Darth Maul, essentially. And then you play as Padme, then you have to play as Obi-Wan, then you play as Padme, and then there's Obi-Wan. It's a very long level. But if you walk into this hangar, Obi-Wan normally gets pulled into the cutscene, but if you hold force push, you never get pulled in the cutscene, so you're free to walk around the hangar, and uh, there's just an out of bounds right here. So you can run here, and over here is one of the segments where you would play as Obi-Wan in one of the like later parts of the level. And right over here, for some reason, there's an end level trigger, and you just jump right into it. So that's a very long level, just completely circumvented, because holding force push prevents you from getting pulled into cutscenes. Isn't that nice? Isn't that neat? 
So here's the final battle. Uh, this is another level where you play as Padme, Obi-Wan, Padme, Obi-Wan. No, I think it's Padme, Obi-Wan, Padme, Obi-Wan, Padme, Obi-Wan. Uh, it, it's another one where there are like multiple transitions between characters. But um, here's one uh, out of bounds where you bypass one of those transitions entirely. Uh, one of the Obi-Wan levels. By pushing this box over here, there is an out of bounds you can get. It's it's hard to get first try because you kind of just rub against the wall and hope you get this like good kind of see how she kind of like nudges over. You got to just get a good lucky thing. Run out of bounds, go into this room, and we've bypassed an Obi-Wan segment. Actually, we're just going straight to the final Obi-Wan segment now. Um, so you remember this part of the movie. This is where Padme gets a light repeating blaster and just runs through a bunch of battle droids and droidicas. Also, I like how Padme earlier, when you're escorting her, she gets shot by one shot. She kneels for 10 seconds and said, sorry, a blaster just grazed my shoulder. But here she's just like, oh. <laughs> so I think that's very funny. Uh, you're just doing key card things. There's a key card floating in the sky, just like in the movies. And do this last jump. This is actually a butt clenching jump right there. The really sweaty jump. It's a little harder than it might look. It's not hard, but in the moment it's hard. So here we are at the final Obi-Wan segment. Casually, there's a bunch of other parts of the level where you're playing as Obi-Wan, but it just plops you here. And it actually doesn't spawn a bunch of droids that are supposed to be walking along these um, catwalks. So that's nice. It's just a nice little benefit. So up here... There's going to be a little window, a big, not a little window, a big open window to the left. You'll see it immediately on the left here. Um, we can actually jump in here and bypass a, number one, a box puzzle Obi-Wan has to do. This is, that, that is a nerve-wracking jump, by the way. Um, this jump, though, this is a good setup by Puri Puri. Shouts to him. You actually have to do this jump in this exact way, because if you jump too far to the left there, right here, if you're too far to the left, you hit a cutscene, you hit a trigger to play another Padme segment. So that whole jump, number one, it skips an Obi-Wan puzzle, Obi-Wan box puzzle. And number two, it skips an entire Padme level. So once those two jumps are done, you are almost home free. All you have to do is fight Darth Maul. Fight Darth Maul. And you'll see what I mean in a second. Obi-Wan still has his blaster, he has his missile launcher, and whatever other weapons you have. Unfortunately, none of them are effective in the Darth Maul fight. I wish they were, but Darth Maul is kind of designed so that the lightsab lightsaber is the best thing to fight him. So now you run down here. Uh, the pattern in which you have these doors is seemingly random. I got a bad one because the doors closed right before I got to the cutscene, but it is what it is. I have killed your master, and now it is your turn to die, young Jedi. You remember when Darth Maul said that? So we're going to go fight Darth Maul. Just kidding. We're going to run past him and get an infinite saber glitch and just stand on him. So he zaps you a couple times, but it's totally fine. And he is locked here. His AI is completely baffled as what to do. And you can see his health is just draining and draining and draining. And backflip, and that's when time ends. There you go. And that is Star Wars Episode 1 The Phantom Menace. Uh, this was a deathless and saveless run. Um, with saves, like safety saves for a marathon's sake, this is about a 48 minute estimate. Um, on average, it's like a 44 minute run. With uh, saves and with voices on, it's about a 44 minute one. Minute one uh, minute run. Um, without voices on, it's probably like a 42 minute run. Voices actually add a lot of time. Um, but it's, you know, it's kind of worth it, in my opinion. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, if you enjoyed that, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, subscribe. And uh, if, I don't know if I should advertise my Twitch because YouTube apparently bans channels who advertise their Twitch, so. Don't even try to search for my twitch.tv slash St. Million. I don't advocate it. I don't. Don't do it at all. But thanks for watching. 
I hope you enjoyed. Oh yeah, we also I also have to show you the in-game timer that this game has. So credits. Skip past it. Come on. Come on past St. Million. Skip past the credits. There we are. Two hours, 19 minutes, five seconds. The number to the left of all those times is uh, the difficulty setting. It's, it has a dynamic difficulty setting. If you don't die, it bumps up the difficulty by one. So you see it goes four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 nine. Um, it actually adjusts your difficulty based on, I think, I think deaths. I'm not sure. Uh, and the difficulty just, it affects something, I think. I think it makes your blaster deflections back to droids more accurate or something. Um, something really weird. And there is some way to break down these times to be an actual in-game time, but it's not accurate at all. It's based on, like, lag and something. Something. I don't know. But that's it. Everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.